The Prime Minister is holding a meeting of the COBRA Emergency Committee this afternoon following the Taliban's rapid advances in Afghanistan. It comes as 600 British troops prepare to deploy to Afghanistan to provide protection and support for British nationals trying to leave. Well, I'm joined now by Paul Farthing, a former Royal Marine commando who is in Kabul. Paul, really glad we managed to get through to you to talk to you about this. I've, I've been looking at what you've been tweeting as this situation out there deteriorates. But before we talk about your feelings on this, can you describe to us uh, the situation there right now? Um, right now, here in Kabul, it is absolute panic. Um, I I've never seen anything like it at all. Um, there are thousands of refugees now coming in from all over the country, um, hoping that Kabul is going to be their last um, hope of you know, safety. Um, and it is just desperation everywhere. Um, it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, you mentioned that word hope. Uh, one of your tweets says, Western governments gave young generations of Afghans hope for the future. They abandoned them to the wolves. Do you still feel that way? Absolutely. Um, you know, it takes a couple of generations of people, you know, to actually change a society. Um, and, you know, we had given them all the tools, you know, we'd given young women hope, you know, aspirations for the future. Um, we'd given them opportunity to go to school. You know, some of the young women who work for us here at our charity, you know, they were only young girls when um, the Taliban were removed from power and they took that opportunity for education. Um, they now work, they choose their own career paths, um, even have, you know, their own um, options now. They want to, you know, marry for love, not because someone tells them to. And we have literally, we have just thrown that away. We have just pulled that rug from under their feet and said, sorry, get on with it. Um, I am, I'm absolutely just, I'm in despair. I just cannot believe we have done this to the Afghan people after everything that was sacrificed for the last 20 years, this is what we've done. And you, of I'm, course, I'm have put, uh, Paul, witnessed those sacrifices. You're a former Royal Marine. How does it make you feel on a personal level? You've talked about the sacrifices made. 457 British uh, soldiers have, have died. And, you know, of course, hundreds of thousands of deaths and injuries in Afghanistan. How do you feel about this? Um, I lost two of my young Marines in Helmand back in 2006. Um, and I truly now want somebody to tell me what was the point. Um, it, it, I, I have no words, absolutely no words to describe um, the hurt, the upset, the confusion. Um, and I've been talking to a few of my colleagues and friends who also served out here in Afghanistan. And they are just absolutely shocked at how the politicians have decided that, yep, We'll just give up on Afghanistan. Um, no, I have no words. We, I'm ashamed, absolutely ashamed to be a part of what has just happened. The Prime Minister is holding an emergency COBRA meeting here this afternoon, um, Paul. I'm not sure if you've heard we've just broken the story. And uh, they are now sending British troops back to Afghanistan, not to fight, but to get Britons out. Um, will you be amongst those people trying to get back to the UK to safety? <laughs> right now, um... I'm going to say no, I can't. I cannot just leave my staff behind. Um, you know, as I said, we've got young women who work for us. You know, what do I say to them? Well, I've got a British passport and, you know, Boris is sending the troops in to get me out. But sorry, you've got to stay. Um, whether or not I can, I honestly don't know whether I put my staff in more danger by being here um, is something that we're actually discussing now. Um, um, and yeah, I, right now I couldn't I couldn't tell you and give you an honest answer. Uh, my heart says I've you know I want to stay and I want to be here you know you know for my staff and especially we've got a, an animal shelter here. You know what do I do with the animals? Um, you know it, it's just absolutely heartbreaking and to see everything that has been worked for for the last twenty years thrown away. I, I have no words. Absolutely have no words. I, I can see the distress on your face and I can hear it in your voice, Paul. And, and it's what you just said is really striking that you're not sure if your presence will actually put them in danger. I mean, what a difference from how you've spent the last few years, crucially. And that is because 
you're worried, presumably, that the Taliban is making such speedy advances that they may well march into Kabul and, and cause people their harm. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what everybody here is now concerned about. I mean, the Taliban are literally 100 kilometres away from Kabul, um, you know, as I sit here now. Um, and their rapid advance over the last few days you know, has literally taken everybody by surprise. There really has been no resistance against them. Um, and I, you know, I hear now, obviously, the Americans are sending in 3,000 troops, the British are sending in 600, you know, to get us, you know, Westerners out. Well, why didn't they do that just to force the Taliban to an actual peace negotiation table? Why did we just hand Afghanistan back? Um, I, I am literally, like I said, just unfounded. We could have made the Taliban go to the peace negotiating table and actually have peace here in Afghanistan, but we didn't. Somebody somewhere needs to answer for that. The lives lost, the money wasted, the futures destroyed. It's, it's not acceptable. Somebody somewhere needs to answer to this. Paul, do you feel betrayed? Do you have a message for Boris Johnson? Um, not just Boris Johnson, but to all the Western leaders, yes. Absolutely, I feel betrayed. I know every single serving uh, soldier who has been out in Afghanistan, any veteran um, who lost someone, who sacrificed so much, they will truly today be saying, what was the point? And to the Afghan people, I can only say sorry. Um, because obviously, you know, I'm British. Um, you know, it's my government that's made a decision. So I, I can only say sorry to them because we have left them to the wolves and that is just unacceptable.